The Clements Library is pleased to announce the acquisition of a previously unattainable map that marks an important moment in the history of the Great Lakes region in particular and American history in general. This plan of the fort at Detroit, or Detroit was drawn by military surveyor and map draftsman William Brazier for General Jeffrey Amherst, the British commander of North America during the French and Indian War. Brazier signs the plan in the lower right corner as W.B., made in Albany on August 18, 1761. The date is important because it shows that we are only nine months after Detroit was ceded to the British by the French as a result of British victories in the French and Indian War. This plan is probably based on a French map of the fort. We know that when British officers took possession of the fort in November of 1760, the French commander handed over a plan of the fort as well as an inventory. Brazier's rendering preserves the French scale using toise, a unit of six feet, and he highlights significant features on the plan as are marked in the reference key in the lower left. He shows the gunpowder magazines marked at A in the lower left corner of the fort. He shows the church marked D. He shows the blockhouses in the northwest and northeast corners at B, and the Cavalier, a raised platform for gun mortars at C. Particularly striking is the gardens at E in the southeast corner, which are now surrounded by the Palisades. The layout of the streets is shown in French with all their French names as the Rue Saint-Joseph, the Rue Saint-Jacques, the Rue Saint-Anne. Most arresting, however, is the inclusion of the inset of a small view of the fort as seen from the west. We see the fort in the same way that the British saw it when they approached it on that November day of surrender. As we approach the fort just behind us would be the village of Potawatomi's, and across the river would be the villages of the Hurons and the Odawas. The rooftops just near the river would have been the homes of the French habitants or farmers whose lands and their strip farms surrounded the fort. The entire area around the fort at Detroit was a gathering place for many indigenous groups like the Hurons and Potawatomi's. It was an important trading center in furs. As a map prepared for military leaders like Amherst, the Brazier Plan had the potential to inform British planning for the Great Lakes region and the recognition and accommodation of Native Americans in establishing the British control of the fur trade. The Brazier map fills a gap in the library's collections of Detroit plans. It becomes our earliest original manuscript plan of the fort in the collection, as well as the earliest view we have of the fort. Earlier plans are all facsimiles of French manuscript maps held in French archives. So this plan thus marks that most significant moment in American history of the transfer of colonial power and transformation of the Midwest.